It's time for mailbag. Now you can see I've got a siglant thing here. I decided to buy something, as I do. See what's in here. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon, that sort of stuff. Always forget to say it and say it at the end. I should really say it at the front. Right. Ah, right. Hmm. And a chocolate bar. Thank you. Um, I purchased these locally. I found these recently. These are different size push clips. So these are often used in bits of test gear, or at least something very similar to this used in bits of test gear. So I've got two different sizes. These are from a company called carclips.co.nz. No sponsorship, it's just um, I found them. Because I'm working on these Datron multimeters, and they've got these little push clips in there. And they you know, secure the circuit boards in. And get the focus point, there we go. So it's a little push clip. You just push that in, and it pushes these little figures out and latches it in. All right, so it's a little plunger like this. So I bought a bunch of them thinking, well, I'll, if I'm going to get some, I might as well get like a lifetime supply. I never have to get worried about them ever again. So I think these are 4.6 mil or something like these ones. And I've also got another size here, which is slightly bigger. Just a little number for that one. They do like um, car, well, the company's called Car Clips, but they do um, trim panel retaining clips and like supply replacement ones for the various manufactured cars and stuff like that, and these are just there in the other category. So there's this one. I think this was about 6 mil or something like that. I can't remember what size it was now. But it's on the website, so I was just going to have a look. So I've got two different sides thinking, right, I, I, I know these ones are the right ones. These big ones might be used for some other stuff. I haven't got anything in particular for these right now, but I thought, right, I'm getting them. And they're not that expensive either. They're fairly cheap. What prompted me to find these, actually, was Feedback Loop. Um, I know he watches my videos too. If you're not familiar with Feedback Loop, go and check out his channel as well. He does lots of test equipment repairs and things like that. He he's, um, does some very interesting videos. So he repaired a Datron as well. And he found some clips from a different company. Um, what company was that? I've forgotten. Gormit it was. So he posted on the EV blog forum and stuff like that. So I think he put it on his video as well. But obviously for me, they're overseas. And so right, well, if you can just buy aftermarket clips, let me look a bit further afield. And I started using the search terms based upon what that website was calling them. And sure enough, I found these locally. So I was very happy about that. So these are great. So I know that the Datrons do have a couple of broken clips. And I have had other pieces of gear before in the past, other things which have used this Zaclang clips and have been broken. Or, you know, been partially broken, that sort of stuff. So it's good to have some spares finally. And I've also got these ones too. These are just some trim panel ones, generic trim panel ones. These are called Suzuki ones, but these are for my motorhome. I've got a couple of missing, although these are on colour, they're actually supposed to be grey, not black. But they didn't have grey available on the site, they only had black ones. So these should be the right size to at least fill the holes in and do the job. They're the same kind of thing, they're just the wrong colour. So those clips, I think they're like a dollar each, something like that. Or you could buy 25 for, I think it was $7, something like that. So they're not expensive, especially if you're trying to repair a piece of test gear. You know, it's great. And they were really fast. I only ordered these a couple of days ago and they've arrived. I mean, then I think half an hour I'd be doing the order, they'd ship them. They're super fast, so very happy with them. So if you happen to be in New Zealand, then carclips.co.nz, I recommend them. Okay, this is something which will be linked down below. That's all these, actually. It is a tube of solder paste. It weighs a lot. SN42BI58. Oh, I don't know. I guess that's their free, is it? Oh, I've got no idea. Anyway, I didn't have any solar paste. Well, I've got a little bit somewhere. I've got like a little jar of it. Somewhere. I seem to have lost it because it's probably so small. And I thought, right, I'll get some solar paste. And um, yeah, so, well, might as well. So, you've got something from RS here. Right, this is a fallback in case I can't get this part. These are surface mount parts. See, they've got a bunch of them in there. So it's MC14016BDG. The Datrons use an MC14016BCP, which is the standard dip package 
they're hard to get. You can get them still. If you look around, there's a few places that got them, but they are no longer made. So this is the replacement, and then you see it's service mount. So what I have to do is, if I need to use these, is use some adapters that may or may not affect the actual circuitry. That's the only problem. So that's like a last resort if I need to use one. If I can't get an original, then I'll be using these and adapters. But that's what you have to do sometimes. So this is something I got from eBay. There's quite a few of them on there actually, at the moment at least. Right, it doesn't feel like it's packaged particularly well. I can feel like there's a hard bit right there. So, you know, that's actually hard. So I don't think it's packaged well. We'll find out. I'm actually surprised it came in a bag. Yeah, so it's like no bubble wrap here, and it's all on this side. Yeah. Yeah, not the best packaging people. Why can't people just get this basic thing right? It's in an interesting state. I don't think it's gonna be like damaged anyway, but you know this is post get damaged, but I don't think they're a problem. So this is a standard capacitor. Apparently. It's a very old standard capacitor, and it's a hmm <laughs> warranty void. Well calibration void if broken from Cyprus. Hmm. Never heard of them. One microfarad, plus or minus 0.05%, apparently. I got this to be a reference capacitor, basically. I don't know how accurate it's going to be after how many years it's been since I made this thing. It's a 1409Y, is the model number. I think Y is the capacitance value. 1409 is the style of capacitor, you know, in this kind of case. Also, it's got a guard terminal. So we should measure this and see what actually comes out, see if it looks anywhere near right. I mean, who knows? It could be anything. Well, it's looking pretty good actually. I'll show you my LCR meter just on the bench here. Well, I've got my East Tester one running. You can see the leads clipped on. I'll show you that. And here you go. This is what it comes up as at 100 hertz. That's pretty good, isn't it? That looks acceptable. Let's change frequencies, 120 hertz, still good. Obviously, the higher frequency generally you get um, more effects, but uh, 800 hertz, 1 kilohertz. So there you go, 10 kilohertz max, 0 0.006. And considering this is 1 microfarad plus or minus 0.05%, this is an order of magnitude better, according to this at least. Assuming this is correct. So. That looks spot on. I'm very happy with that. It's nice to have a reference capacitor. And this is what my Siglant thinks it is. Not bad. Again, pretty much agrees with the LCR meter. It's slightly higher. I'm using a different cable. Obviously I'm using this thing, which will have some capacitance in itself. I might try changing the leads to a couple of individual leads instead. See if that changes it much. Okay, so this one I'm getting on an individual lead. So using individual leads like this, so there's no close capacitance. And um, yep, yeah, that's looking alright. So here's the DI5000, that's what it thinks of it. That's also pretty close, this is at 1 kilohertz, let's change frequencies. 10 kilohertz, yep, yeah, that pretty much agree with everything else. 100 kilohertz, that changes quite a bit, 100 kilohertz. 100 hertz, look at that, very good. That is pretty accurate, doesn't it? It sort of confirms that this is very accurate compared to the other meters I've got. They all pretty much concur within a small percentage. So at least that means this capacitor is a good reference. Very happy with that. So 100 hertz is where it's most accurate, which is kind of expected. Right, let's see what's in here. Well, I know what's in here. In fact, I think I need to escape it away. We have some scope probes. We have four scope probes. Bit of a clue there. Power cable. Now you've actually seen me do one of these before. I've done a review on one of these things before. Here we go. That's what I'm trying to say. Another second pin. So yes, this is a SDS. 1000 series scope. Now this is well, 1000X series scope, I should say. Need to get it right. 
I've done a review on this particular scope before myself. Not this exact one, but you know, the same model. If you haven't seen that review, go back and check my history. I think it's about a year or so ago, maybe. Yeah, it's probably about a year ago I think I reviewed it, something like that. Maybe I'll link it down below or up there or something like that. I decided that I need to get a four channel scope because there's been numerous times where I wished I had a four channel scope. I mean, I've got two scopes up here. I've got my other Siglant, which I've had for years, and my Keysight, which Keysight generously gave me. And this Siglant 2102 is what it actually was. I've hacked it to be a 2302. No, it does 240 megahertz there, 100. Anyway, but you can't get that scope anymore. I've been they stopped selling that particular model years ago. I think I've had that one about god, it must be four years, maybe a bit longer. I'm not too sure actually, maybe five. I actually don't know. But that's the MSO scope, that's got all the options on it for that. This one is also an MSO scope, however, I don't have the MSO attachment for it, unfortunately. They're fairly expensive to get, and as I already have an MSO scope, I didn't see the point in buying one. Maybe I'll be a source one later on one day. Would be nice to have the uh, MSO option for this as well. So it's the STS-1104XE. Like I said, I've reviewed this one before. They're a pretty affordable scope, and feature-wise, they're pretty good as well. And so I've reviewed one of these, and I thought it was pretty good. So I decided to get one. Yeah, kind of splashed out a little bit there. <laughs> I mean, I would love to get the 2000 series, the 2104 x Plus. Is that right? Yeah, I think it is. Which I also reviewed not long ago, actually. I would love to get on one of those, but um, the, the price is a bit expensive. For, for me, for my budget, and you know, realistically, I've already got scopes. You know, it's not like I, I don't have anything. I just needed something to su supplement my current abilities, and this will do the job. 100 megahertz will probably be enough. I might need to tweak that. We'll see. But it's got S bus on it, so it's not actually an HDMI connection. It looks like an HDMI port, but it's not a HDMI port. It's slightly different. So this is what they use for their MSO option. So I would love to get one of those. I haven't actually checked up the pricing, but. Um, I know they're going to be, I'm guessing, I'm not, I have to verify, it's probably two or three hundred bucks, I'm guessing, MSO, I really don't know, I have to look into it, maybe I'll get it later on. I like my equipment to be maxed out, everything I have, I like it to be as good as it can possibly be, and I like to do that straight away, because who knows, in five years you might find, oh, you can't buy that part anymore because it's no longer a supported model, you know, because things move on and progress and new technology emerges and things get better and better. And then the older models are no longer supported. You know, they only got a certain lifetime. You know, not just this, but all brands. All brands are the same. You may find you have trouble getting a particular thing for it. So I do try, if possible, to get things at the very beginning. So I've got them. And then I don't have to worry about it, you know. Even if I don't use it, well, if I don't use it, it's a bit of a waste. But if I don't use it, then oh well. You know, at least I've got it. So, yes, I probably will be looking into getting one of these things at some point. It would be definitely be nice to have one. I've got one for my... 2102 <laughs> 2302 um, I've got that I've got the MSO for that one so should we power this up and have a look I suppose we should I should also say that Sigland did me a bit of a deal on this too they helped me out a little bit and um, they gave me a, a bit of a special offer so I actually got this for a, a quite a good price I have to say also thanks for Rob at Tower Packet Technology who supplied this he also gave me a bit of a discount too because he you know lands with gear so thanks to Rob also for giving me a bit of a discount as well the discounts helped to make it more affordable for me to, uh, to actually buy this thing so it's been great very helpful so I'm not going to go too deeply into this thing so I've done a review on this before so you know if you want to see a, a detailed review about this then go and watch my review video um, I'll link it down below or something but just basically you got a calibration sort of thing just to prove it's been checked well, it's uh, measurements, well, verifications were checked against, shall I say. So, multimeter, precision source measure unit, signal generator. So, Roden Swartz signal generator, key site, precision source measure unit, an Agilent digital multimeter, and power meter. Calibrated in January, so it's made this year. And also, you get a software CD, you've got some software on there, be manuals on the CD as well, and that kind of stuff. And you got a quick start guide, but I don't really need that because I'm, I'm familiar enough with Siglant gear to not need to read it. But if you get something like this, for, for, you know, and you've never used one before, it'd be helpful to you to understand how to sc use a scope and um, what features it has. You know, just a, bit of a quick overview how to use it. So I've already rearranged my shelving here recently. Well, I did it a couple of days ago in order to allow space for this scope to fit on it. Now, obviously, having three scopes all at once set up is a bit overkill. But each scope has got its own merits, okay? Different scopes are better at different things, like different features, sets, or certain uh, functionality will be better on some one scope than another, right? For example, the Keysight scope decoding is a bit limited compared to the Siglant. The Siglant's got better decoding on it, okay? But the Keysight decoding, in some ways, is better 
as well because it decodes a different way. Like if you're doing serial decoding, it will tell you the converted ASCII, right? It'll tell you the ASCII numbers uh, from the ASCII numbers, right? It'll tell you the actual ASCII characters. You know, the character turn or say CR and that sort of stuff, whereas the signal will just give you the digital values of the ASCII. Right, so they they both do the conversion, but do them in different ways. And sometimes you want to see it in a different way to make it easier. So sometimes having both types is brilliant. Right, decoding on a signal is actually better. It's a bit more inclusive, um, in my opinion. But the key site is slightly faster. So again, trade-offs. You know, it's all about what features I have. As for this one, um, it's very similar to my to my other one here. Very similar in that regard. I think it's got may have some extra options in there too for the signal decoding. But I'm not sure. But the main thing I've got this for is the um, four channels. Because so there have been times that I wanted four channels and I didn't have them. Uh, a couple of years ago now. Yeah, two and a half years ago. I was repairing the Fluke 5200A. Big repair series on that. And Dave Jones at EV Blog, Dave. He featured my repair video on his channel in January. One of his, it's one of his guest videos. And at the time I had... I think it might have been this one actually. I think it was this one I was reviewing at the time. Yeah, it would have been. I actually used one of these as part of the process to repair that unit because I needed multiple channels in order to do follow a signal through an oscillator stage and I was using that for that I think it was one of these I was working on actually so um, it's all look there we go there's Rob's sticker thing on the back there right. tautech.co.nz at that stage I was lucky to be reviewing a scope at the time and that allowed me to do that repair and, and to diagnose that section because I just didn't actually know exactly where the problem was, I had to because it went through a phase on each stage of the oscillator stage. It sort of went through, I think it did like a 90 degree phase or something, and a, um, a 270 degree phase change as it went through each stage. And I had to test each one at the same time to know if it's changing phase or not. And that's the sort of thing you need one of these things for, you know, multiple channels. Anyway, so now I've got a scope shelf. Well, kind of. It's not only a scope shelf, it's also a soldering shelf as well. But anyway, you, know, you get the idea. That's plugged in the power. Green light is on, pulsing, I can see that. You won't be able to see it because the lighting is a bit bright. Let's power it up. I have to check the firmware revisions as well, see if it's got the latest firmware in it. I'm not sure what the current version is actually. I have forgotten. I did look it up, but I forgot when the numbers were. Obviously I have to hook the probes up in the air and do the probe conversation, that sort of stuff, get them all adjusted up, get it ready. Probably do some configuration here as well, get it set up how I like it too. So, yep, yeah, got boots anyway. Let's look at the system, um, system status, we're on 6.1.35 R2. Yes, that was the latest version. That was correct. So it's had four startups already. Obviously this is one of them. Um, what must have happened is Rob probably started up, checked it out, made sure it was okay. Upgraded the firmware to the latest version. Upgraded. Upgraded. <laughs> Updated or upgraded the firmware to the latest version to make sure it's correct. And probably boot it again to make sure that's OK, and then send it off to me. I think Rob's is pretty good at uh, checking them, make sure things are behaving correctly as they should be. Not like I doubt it'd be a problem, but you know, I suppose it's always best to be prudent, isn't it? So as far as options go, I don't think I've got any options in this. I think it's pretty basic. That I don't. I didn't pay for any extra options anyway, so I don't think I have anything. I'd have to do a self count and stuff like that later on as well. That information. So I've got temporary licenses on the AWG, USB Wi-Fi, and MSO. At the current stage, at least, I, I'll probably get licenses for these or something, or something, and unlock all these. And they've got them then. Slides to have things for the option. Obviously, the MSO that requires the adapter anyway, so there's no point unlocking that because I need the adapter. I need just need to buy the thing. USB Wi-Fi can use certain USB dongles for that. There's a certain one. It's a TP-Link. I can't remember exactly what the model number was for that one. Um, it was in the review video, and obviously the AWG's temporary license as well. So. I'll probably use that, but both my key site here and my other signal both have AWG as well. So I've got plenty of AWGs. I don't really need to unlock this one, but it's just again I like to have things feature rich and you know worry about the rest later. The AWG on these units isn't actually like a is on some other scopes where you've got the BNC port where you can just help it straight from that. This uses a USB powered AWG. This uh, SAG something is the model number I think if I remember rightly. I don't actually have one of those, so I'm not worried about the AWG anyway, so I've already got two here, and I've also got some standalone AWGs anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me. Um, but I, I did sort of mention AWG as an option here and having one, but obviously without that module, just like the 
MSA option as well. You need the modules to be able to use those features. So I thought I'd mention that just to clarify that in case someone says, "Oh, you, you, that's wrong." I, was, I did know that. I just wanted to clarify that because I didn't say it explicitly. Yeah, someone will complain. That's the way it goes. Was it you? Was it going to be you doing that? So I'm just going to do the calibrations on these probes. I do them on the channel they're going to be used on. I don't actually move them between channels. So when I do a calibration on a probe, it shouldn't really matter that much. But I'd just like to do it allocated to the channel. So they're all being color coded already. Rob well, must have already done that. Or maybe they came that way. This is the pink channel. This is channel two. And you can see it's scrolling across right now because I don't actually have the trigger set on channel two. I can see that it looks fine. So I'm not going to worry about that. That's okay. We'll take that one off and we'll do the next one. Let's do channel one. Let's check them all out. Channel 1, we'll see that looks fine. Okay, that's not going to scroll across because it's actually triggering on that channel, so that's fine. That's looking good. So I'll check all the probes out, make sure they're looking right, make sure they're calibrated correctly. And, uh, or compensated correctly is the correct word, isn't it? Compensated and calibrated. At least then that's that job done, and I can just put these probes to one side. And when I need to use the scope, I'm going to put them all out. That's channel 2 there. So it's got shared controls for each channel, so that's looking right. That's looking fine. I should also mention the probes have to be in 10 times, not 1 times. Go and see how they can you? Just have to be in that position on a 10 times position, not 1 times position. Otherwise it doesn't work. Just a thing to watch out for. Otherwise you could think, oh you got it right, and then it's actually... No, you haven't got it right because you didn't actually switch switch over. Because <laughs> it works differently. Conversation is about a 10 times range. Check the next one out. Four. Yeah, it's looking alright too. No problems there. Happy with that. And for those of you that haven't seen my shelving before, this is what it looks like. So I've now got three scopes here. I've still got the Hantec in my other lab as well, my RF lab. I've got a Fluke A842A, which is a brilliant reference uh, multimeter. It's very accurate, so that's like my base standard for, you know, it's very stable, reliable, it's really good. Very well aged, so it's it's 100%. It looks it's great, you know. You get an aging profile on anything, because this is such an old unit. The aging means it's pretty stable. You've got the East Tester LCI meter, which I've done a review on. I've got the Siglent STL1020XE 200 watt DC electronic load. I've done a review on this one. In fact, I've done a review on this actual unit. I've got my STM3065X, which I think I've also done a review on this one. I was in this particular unit as well, I think it was. Up here has got my CMU200 communication tester. My Marconi 2022D RF signal generator. And over here is a Philips a films account. So this is just what's on my shelving here, which is things I used to for verifying bits of test gear and repairing stuff and that sort of stuff. You know, it's it's my everyday gear. Obviously I've got lots of other stuff tucked away, but this is what I mostly use. You never seem to have enough stuff, it's amazing really. And obviously I've got my KSGR soldering station here, which I did a review on, and the quick A61DW, which I also did a review on. So a lot of things I've done reviews on. Things I've repaired, I've repaired that, I repaired that. I repaired this, I think. No, no, that's actually okay when I bought that. It's, it's sold as parts repair, but actually we're fine. Have fun with it. Marconi was also okay when I got that. It didn't have anything wrong with it, I think. Oh, no, it did have a small problem. It was the reference was playing up. I fixed that. But yeah, that was before I started doing YouTube. There you go. Thanks for watching. Give a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Click the bell icon so you get notifications about new videos. Anything I'll do in the future, I'll get to see you later on. Have a chat down in the comments there. Catch you later. Bye. Thanks for the Patreons. Thanks everybody. Does that cover it? I think I'm on auto range still here. Yeah. I want, hold on. It says auto there, God. I was looking at one thing. Where are you going? Come back. Capacitance, come on. Capacitance series, there we go, that's what I want. Tiffany series, there we go, right. I'll do this a bit again. Right, this in. This isn't the first time you see me show this particular, well, a item of exactly this unit. I'm waffling, aren't I? What the? I've done a review on one of these things before. Here we go, that's what I'm trying to say. There's a certain one, it's a TP link, I can't remember exactly what number number is. What number? I can't remember exactly. Oh god.